This video began as a project to let people know about how to meet your legislators, but it developed into something more than that. If you've ever had an issue or a concern about something you're passionate about, or it's related to your profession, or who you are as a student, a parent, or a service provider, listen to this video because it has a story about advocacy. If you've ever wondered whether your voice makes a difference or whether your profession makes a difference in the lives of other people, listen to this message because advocacy is important, the process of advocacy is important, as well as relationship building. Advocacy is more important now than ever before. Uh, with the era of term limits and the fact that the members don't have that longevity, uh, it's a constant process to help educate people who are making decisions that affect your everyday work. And one of the things that's kind of a, the nasty reality of the good work that we do every day, whether it's in schools or hospitals or whatever, it is it dramatically shaped by what happens at the Capitol. And if you don't pay attention to it, and be active in shaping sort of the outcome of it, then you're just gonna be along for the ride and subject to whatever those kinds of things are that will change what you do, and you don't have input on it. It takes work to connect with people, right? I mean, we, we can talk about it and, and it sounds easy, but you have to know where they are and how to get to them. So the first thing I would say is realize that legislators are not always in Sacramento. The typical legislative schedule for about uh, almost 40 weeks a year is they're in Sacramento Monday through Thursday. They're home on Fridays. The legislature is not in Sacramento uh, in the fall uh, and in the winter. They usually take uh, October, November, December off. So then members in the legislature are home. And invite a member to lunch. Invite a member to be able to go out and have a drink. It really is worth it to try to make that appointment in the office, 15 minutes, kind of a meet and greet, uh, even without an agenda, just to establish that relationship. And just come in for a courtesy visit to tell them a little bit what we do and act as a resource. Make sure you start with basic understandings because assuming they know what uh, a speech therapist is is an assumption you probably shouldn't make. And uh, I'll be quite honest, I had no idea what the breadth of the things that CASHA members do. Something that's really important in that relationship is making sure that you're not only contacting that legislator when you need them, that you're making contact and you're reaching out to legislators to tell them what a good job they're doing when they do something that's great. The day on the hill, as some people like to call it, or the day here in Sacramento is critically important. And that's an opportunity when we can really move mountains, when we're able to match up individuals with their own members of the legislature, both the Assembly and the Senate. And we will provide the talking points. We'll do the bullets for you, two, three, four points that we want you to make. Staff for the legislator are often the key people making uh, the recommendations and actually, in the end of the day, almost making the decision. The legislator is juggling such an incredible array of issues that um, they're going to go to staff and say, what are you hearing on this? The staffer can be invaluable, so you've got to make sure that you're taking that opportunity. Sometimes we go barreling in and say, I'm with this organization and here's all my issues and you start, and they, they need to back up and know who you are first. And if you dial it back and say, here's what we're all about fundamentally, and we get that elevator speech, that small encapsulized description of the organization and what we do so that they can really understand it, it's accessible. The rest of it's easier to create that linkage to why it's so imperative that they pay attention to the issues that we care about. And then, as I think it's important to underscore, is that there's a likelihood for all of us, but including lawmakers, that there's somebody in their life, someone in their family or a friend or a neighbor, who's encountered a need for the kind of services that we provide, whether it's an early age or in the family setting or as seniors, and you want to make that link, is that 
to the degree that maybe you've ever had that experience as you're talking to the legislator. And then they think about it and say, well, I have. And you draw that out. That's where you make that linkage that it's so imperative. And you want to make sure you tell them, I, I live in your district. You know, I've just seen you recently. I saw your name in the paper. Saw you on TV. Um, and, and, and then you can just, and after a minute or two of this small talk and making the niceties, because people have time schedules, and we'll keep you on a time schedule, then you can say, by the way, these are our three big issues that we wanted to help educate you about. And my experience is they'll be appreciative. When we're talking to legislators about the constituents that we serve, the, the students and the families that we serve, um, it is important to make that connection is that we want to be a bridge between you and all the people in this district and the subset of constituents that have these particular needs that live here in your district. And I think that when they see that linkage, they, they end up being very positively reacting to the kind of role that you can play in building that bridge. One of the biggest issues over the state capitol this year in the budget process, and just politically, it's even across the country, is early education and, and preschool in particular, uh, and a focus on kids before they're entering typical elementary school. So the fact that you start so early with these, with these kids, and that then you span a lot of the other issues right up to senior and elderly care, and addressing the issues of our older citizens, and everything in between makes you that much more compelling for the legislator to want to hear about. In fact, when you make that request for a visit and you say, look, we deal with issues that span everything from kids in preschool all the way up to what's going on with our seniors and everything in between family issues and health care, that grabs that staffer to say, this is an issue my boss needs to be involved with. So you want to leverage the fact that you've got such an incredible spectrum of services that we provide across the constituencies that they serve. You're somebody that doesn't read all the newsletters, you're inundated with the work you do every day, and you don't have time for all of this stuff. It doesn't mean you can't come up to Sacramento for the legislative day. You don't have to be an expert on politics or a lawyer to come up here and be, uh, or, or to meet with somebody either in Sacramento or in the district and be terribly useful to them. You come to Sacramento, we are gonna brief you, you know, thoroughly, and then you're gonna use your real life experiences in the work you do every day to talk to legislators who don't hear it enough. When you get to Sacramento, between the organization itself and the advocates that are here to help, we'll brief you on talking points and give you the information you need, but what really makes the difference is when you walk into that legislator's office and you have your own story about something real that's happened that you've experienced where you've made a difference for somebody. I mean, you'll be surprised who makes a connection. You know, the, the person that, that spoke the least and was quiet in the meeting will end up developing a relationship with a staff member, and, uh, and that will be key to us. Do establish a relationship, uh, certainly with members of the legislature, that's real clear and fundamental. And what you don't want to do is don't pick a fight. And even if somebody may not be able to help us on this one issue, guess what? There are going to be other issues. I always say this to people, that they're angry about an issue or they're emotional about an issue, and by God, I'm going to speak truth to power when I get in that office. And I always said that's really fine if you don't want another meeting ever again. If you want another meeting with that person or you want to create a relationship where they're listening to you, you should be able to articulate where you've got a difference of opinion or an issue or an ax to grind about an issue that is really compelling to you, but doing it in a polite and a professional way saying, look, I'm, I'm really uh, quite animated about this particular issue and it really has gotten to me and I want to express to you what my feelings are. You want to establish relationships and you can do that many ways. You can do that by providing information, you can be, do that by simply having identification. If you know people, you recognize them. Uh, these folks, you know, if, if you're a voter, in, again, in the district, I keep coming back to the home front, uh, they'll recognize you. If you can participate in their political fundraisers, that's great as well. You want to make sure that you dress professionally, act professionally, be punctual, be on time, and be respectful of the demands uh, on the members' time as well. One of the things I really commend to 
um, anybody that's interested in legislation or, or these issue areas are the websites for the Senate and the Assembly that both have links to legislation. And what you can do is the Senate link, it link is real simple. It's sen.ca.gov. That's the state Senate. The Assembly is assembly.ca.gov. And you go into these websites and you look for the link to legislation. One of the things I highly recommend is the analysis. It's the background of the bill that's written by the staff at the Capitol building that gives you everything on the background of this particular bill. I, I think emails are good. I think the letters are good. Phone calls are great. But I think you need to consciously find a reason to follow up after the meeting. And, and so a thank you is a great way to start, but find an issue. So there's no way you covered everything that needed to be covered. Uh, oh, thought you might be interested in this article on speech therapists, or thought you might be interested in this. We mentioned uh, uh, traumatic brain injuries. You might be interested in the following. And, um, and I think that starts a relationship, maybe starts a back and forth, maybe they come back to you. Uh, so find some way to keep the relationship going because if they only ever hear from you when you want their vote, right? Uh, that's a different type of relationship. I'm not saying you shouldn't contact them for that, but if you can contact them on an ongoing basis so you're not just asking, hey, vote yes or vote no on this bill, um, that's, a, that's a great way to go. Whenever the legislature does whatever it is you really want to have happen, you just say, oh, good, I'm glad that happened. But forgetting that you've got to acknowledge it. And when you take that step to acknowledge that they did a great job on something and a thank you and how much we appreciate it, that it resonates. If you're the person sitting there contemplating, well, there's this legislative program, maybe not for me, but for someone else, it really is for you too. We need people that are professionals in their field. It's not about being interested in politics particularly, or active in politics, or that you like campaigns, or you love watching you know, the talking heads on TV about politics. You don't have to have any of that stuff. All you have to do is be great at your profession, and that's why we know we need you up here because you have content knowledge that we can now convey to legislators. And they really, at the end of the day, they do care about the policy that goes behind these bills that are, they're voting on. Does it make sense for me to vote yes on this thing? Does it make sense for me to oppose it and why? You can help deliver that message.